Today we will be discussing a general overview and applications within the iTest system software platform. Uh, if you have any questions at any point, feel free to use the chat feature and write your questions in there. At the end of the presentation, we are going to have time for questions and answers. I'm also recording this entire presentation, and that will be posted on our website and sent out to a few people who have asked about it. I'm going to cut out the question section from that recording. Uh, but if anyone has any questions, if you're watching this recording now, our email addresses are going to be provided in this presentation. Feel, feel free to email myself or Mark Yeager uh, with any questions you may have. So let's get started. My name is Matt Sasser. I'm a test engineer here with Integrated Test and Measurement. I also have with me on the line Mark Yeager, who's a software developer at ITM. Our agenda for today, we're going to start with uh, an overview of what iTest system is and what it can be used for. And then we'll jump into the meat of this presentation, which is going to be a demonstration of the features found within iTest system. After that, we'll talk about a few additional applications that can be used with the software and then some of the future updates that will be coming to iTest system pretty soon. And finally, we'll finish it off with some time for Q&A for those who are on the live presentation. So first off, what is iTest system? iTest system is a software platform that enables test engineers to organize, acquire, and view important engineering data using National Instruments C-series hardware, specifically CDEC hardware. So it's essentially a uh, data logger with many other functions available within it. Um, kind of the big key point with iTest system, a reason a lot of our customers like to use it, is that the programming is basically already done. So you can plug in your C-series hardware and just go ahead and start using iTest system immediately without having to do any programming specifically for your application. So we've provided a list here of the compatible NI hardware that can be used with iTest system. Uh, the chassis are all listed here. We have some USB chassis, uh, Ethernet, some controllers, and some of the older chassis that are still compatible with iTest system. Uh, I do actually have a 9172, I believe it is, plugged into my system right now, so we'll see that, or 9171, excuse me, plugged in that we will see when I get into the demonstration portion. The next slide, we have the compatible NI hardware modules. So these are all the types of modules that can be used with iTest system. You'll see there are lots of different types of channels that you can collect data with. Um, so collecting current channels, you can use a 9208 module. You can get thermocouple channels um, using the list of modules provided there. Voltage modules, strain modules. Uh, we just recently added an RTD module. And, of course, you can do synchronization between your chassis using the 9469 module. Uh, this list is also provided on the website, itestsystem.com, uh, and is in the help documentation with the program. So if you have, at any point are wondering if you can use a certain type of module, feel free to check out the website or the help documentation. So let's go ahead and jump into a demonstration. So if we go down... I'm going to drop down down here. I have iTest system. Uh, this is the main screen you're going to be looking at when you're choosing what application to use or going into your configuration. So here there's a couple features that I want to point out. Uh, applications. Right here we have a drop down to choose between either applications or data acquisition. So applications are all the applications you have available with iTest system. Uh, let's see, impact analysis, FRF analysis, test view plus. Uh, the ones I want to point out in particular, Test View Plus is your TDMS viewer provided with NI Test System. And in a couple minutes, we are going to see what that looks like. Scroll down a little bit. Multidac is your data collector, your data logger. So we're also going to see that. Uh, Impact Test is another application that we have available. We do plan a webinar on over the Impact Test feature later. Um, so there are some of these features that you'll see in later webinars that are provided with iTest system. Uh, there are more plugins besides the one I have here, depending on what version of iTest system you'd like to use. 
there is a free version of iTest system that many users prefer to utilize because it uh, meets their needs. Um, there is a paid version as well, and we'll discuss some of the additional features available in the full version a little later in this presentation. So those are our applications. Uh, if I choose this drop down and go to data acquisition, any multi DACs that you have made previously in your configuration are going to appear here. Um, that's going to make a little more sense in a minute after we do a, config a configuration and create a new data acquisition task. So for now, let's look at some of the other features on this main dashboard. Our configuration gear up here, uh, if you select this, it's going to have some of the options. Uh, let's focus on options down here. Settings, if you click on your settings, uh, you can choose things like whether or not you show the getting started screen on startup. You can choose whether you have a startup configuration file, whether it's the most recent one or a custom one. In this case, I've chosen a custom file being my demo config file. And you can also choose to run a multi DAC at startup, and it'll let you choose which multi DAC you'd like to run every time you start it up. So that's a good case where if you have a system plugged in that every time you start a computer, um, you want iTest system to boot up and start collecting data, you would do this run DAC at startup and choose the startup DAC. Also down here is our update service. If you select that, that's going to connect you with iTest system server um, to check for any updates that you may have. We do recommend that you check for new updates before each new test that you run, uh, just to make sure you've got all of the latest plugins. Also here is the help, which will bring you to the ITM documentation about iTest system. Um, and then up here is our configured DAC, which is what I'm just about to use to do that configuration. Uh, the other things I have here are additional feed, um, the future updates that we have coming, notification services, automated analytics, archive manager. I'll talk about those a little bit later in the presentation. The other things I want to point out on this screen, uh, two things are project folder. So when you're doing a configuration, you can choose a certain project folder. And if you just click on that button, it's going to automatically bring that folder up. So this is where I have this presentation, any data that we saved, and the configuration that we're making with it. So you can just get to that project folder easily. And then itestsystem.com, this will just link you directly to our website. So let's go ahead and jump into creating a configuration. Let's choose our configure gear. And choose configure deck. Uh, this is the screen you're going to see. So let's focus on this left side for right now. Uh, the first thing you have is a project tab. If you choose that project tab, um, then this is where you're going to fill in basically documentation and go about that project. So you might choose a, what type of test you're doing, uh, fill out your device under test and your project number a description of that project, and here's that project path. So when I clicked on that uh, project folder button, it went to this path that I set here. So we can change that here and apply any changes we make, and that'll change where that project folder goes. You also have information like the name of the operator who's performing the test and the location where the test is being performed at. So that is your project path. Next is going to be our hardware. So if I just click on this hardware here, uh, iTest system operates a lot like NIMAX does. So uh, any of your hardware that is connected to your computer is going to automatically appear here. And you can just refresh that if you have made any updates to it, and the new hardware will show up here. Uh, just apply it, and it'll show up in your list of hardware. So in this case, I actually have two 9188s, which are simulated hardware. And I have one 9171, which is just that one slot USB jack, which has a 9234 module in it. So when I applied that and ref so I refreshed it and applied it here, those showed up down here. Now, if you need to get into NIMAX to make sure you're configuring your chassis that you have set up correctly, uh, we do have available here. If you just click on Tools and choose Measurement and Automation Explorer, it will automatically pull up NIMAX. All right, uh, so in the hardware, so let's go ahead and focus on the one that I have plugged in. Our 9171 
drop it down, it'll show you your module, which is the 9234. Drop that down, it'll show you the channels that you have. Uh, so in this case, I have a triaxial accelerometer plugged into my 9234 module. Now I've got uh, my Y direction and my Z direction Excel channel created. Let's create an X direction Excel channel right now just to see how to do that. So if you go past hardware and go into channels, uh, this is a list of all the channels that we have created right now. But if we drop down, we can see the different Excel or the different channel types available. So we're going to want to create a new accelerometer channel. So I'll just go to Excel, right click, and do new Excel. And this is where you're going to fill out all the data about that accelerometer. So, let's call this X direction is the name of the accelerometer. Uh, you can give it units, stick with Gs, and then you might want to fill out the, you will want to fill out the sensitivity information. Uh, this particular accelerometer I'm using is a 10 millivolt per G sensitivity. So we'll update that. Uh, choose its excitation source. And if you wanted to use a custom scale, then you would just change your uh, scale units here to from custom scale. And then you can update what the units are uh, and your slope and your y-intercept to get those units. In this case, we're going to stick with G. So once you've made all the changes that you want, you just click Apply. And you'll see it showed up in my list of Excel channels down here. So now what you want to do is go back into your hardware. I have my AI0 channel, which is where I want to apply that channel data that I just made. I just right click on it and choose select channel. You'll see the 9234 lets me choose between accelerometer channels and voltage channels. So we're going to choose the X direction channel, and that's going to apply here. Now the other thing you can do once you have it applied is actually test that channel out. So if I just press the test button right here, I see it's going to give it just a minute for the accelerometer to charge up. It should balance out at about zero. Okay, we're getting close enough that I can show you. So I'm going to start moving this up and down. I am indeed showing a change with accelerometer, acceleration that I'm creating with this accelerometer. So that's just a quick way to test to make sure that the channel is applied correctly and that you are getting the data that you're expecting to get when you perform the test. Just to show you some of the other channels that we have, uh, you can create strain channels, uh, which lets you put information in like the gain, the shunt equivalent, uh, any lead wire resistance, and your gauge factor, everything you would need for strain. Voltage channels, obviously you can fill all that information out. Thermocouple channels, current channels, and of course our newly added RTD channels. The nice thing is, uh, when you go into your hardware, in this case, so I've got this 9188 with a 9236 module, and we know those modules are only for strain. I right-click and do select channel. All it's going to give me are my options for strain channel. So I can just apply that strain channel here. That's applied. If I test it, I've got simulated data. Uh, you know what? I don't have the correct information here in here for that strain channel, so it actually is going to give you an error to tell you my excitation value is incorrect. Uh, it requires a value of 3, probably. 3.3. Sorry, 3.3, uh, which is what my error was. I'll just apply that change, test it again, and now we have simulated data, so that's obviously what's going to appear here. Uh, but that's a nice way to verify before you have created the channel that uh, all your values are filled out correctly. Okay, the other thing you can do with channels. We have this export and import CSV. Uh, so if you just export the CSV, let's just go ahead and do it. Now uh, let's export all of our Excel channels. It's going to create a CSV file. Okay, and so what this does is pull in all of the Excel uh, channels that we've created. It'll show uh, their physical location. 
And all of the sensitivity values, minimax voltage, all of that information that comes with any of your channels will be here. Uh, by exporting it out and then editing any uh, edits that you make, you can obviously mass edit your accelerometer channels from here. Uh, save that file. I don't need to save it right now, but once you save it, you'll be able to go back to this place and import CSV, choose Excel, and it's going to update all of your accelerometer channels. So those are the channels you create and apply to your hardware. The next step is creating your multi deck. So this is the actual task that is going to let you collect data and run multi deck. So first thing you do, just go to this deck, and right here you'll be able to select the type of test you want. We're going to want a multi deck, which is just our general data collection. Give it a name, plot test multi deck, and add it in. You just click on that deck, and this is where you can start editing it from. So if I choose Create Task, it's going to bring up this task configuration. So let me give it a task name. Call it Excel Demo. Uh, you can choose the target rate, uh, which it's actually going to force a certain target rate once I put the channels into it. Uh, and then you can choose your data type. Over here, you can choose whether or not the data is synchronized. So if you've got those 9469 modules between uh, two different USB or two different chassis, you can choose to synchronize your data. And whether or not you want resampling enabled, if you choose that, then it's going to let you choose your resampling settings here and make those things save. This changes. Down here in the bottom is where you're going to modify those channels and add them in. Uh, so in this case, you get to choose the device you're using. We're using CDAC4, which has my Excel channels. And I'm going to file those channels here. So remember my X direction, Excel1 was my Y direction, Excel2 was my Z direction. Press OK. You'll see it coerced our sample rate, depending on the module that we're using. And then we'll just press OK on that. And now we've created a task with those three channels. For ease sake, let's go ahead and go back into this hardware. Let's change the names of these two. So my Excel one is actually my Y direction. Apply those two in. My Excel two is my Z direction. All right. And then when you make any major changes, we do recommend that you save as much as option or as much as possible. You can press Control S to save, or go to File Save, and you'll see that little star that was next to my configuration went away. Uh, so here's an important note. If you make changes and don't click the Apply button, then you're going to have to make those changes again. So let's do that one more time. Excel demo. Add all our channels in. That's where it is coerced. Press OK. And then we need to make sure we click Apply here. Uh, and now if I go back and forth, those changes that we made are here. So something you definitely should pay attention while you're using this. Anytime you make changes, you need to make sure you apply them. Otherwise, it's going to revert it back to what you had earlier, which is good if you are making changes that you don't want to be making. Uh, other things available here, preview data and save. If you click on that, then when you run the multi deck and log data, once you finish logging data, it's automatically going to pull that TDMS file up in uh, our test view plus, which is our TDMS viewer. Other thing here is auto save enabled. So this is a feature that comes with your full version of iTest system. If you click on auto save enabled, you'll be able to go to your file settings. And here you can do a couple of things. Uh, you can give all your files a prefix. So essentially what you're doing is saying every hour or so, I want you to collect one data file uh, and then save that file as a TDMS. So we might give it all a prefix. We might save it to a series of files, uh, and then it's going to give it a suffix if you save it to a series of files, whether that's date and time or a sequential number. You can decide what action to take if the file already exists. So perhaps you're collecting files so quickly that it's overwriting them. You can either rename the existing file, use the next available file name, or just overwrite that file. 
and then your file termination will decide uh, how quickly you are actually creating those new files. So it can be based on a size, it can be based on a specified interval, it can be based at certain times, or it can be based on multiple conditions. So those are all the next options you have to uh, kind of save that data continuously. I'm going to get rid of our autosave. We don't need to do that for this demo, but I'm going to keep preview data on save checked. And then I'm going to apply this changes and save it. So now we've created our multi deck. Uh, next thing I want to see is what's it look like when we run that multi deck. You have two ways to do that. One, you can right click and choose run test, and that will pull it up. Uh, other thing you can do, and this is what we're going to do, close this out. And this is where the data acquisition that I was talking about is. Choose data acquisition. That test multi deck is right here. So what this is great for, you perhaps as the engineer are going to create the configuration for whatever test you need run, but it might be an operator who just is running the test. And we generally want to keep it simple for operators. There's no reason to get more work than necessary. So all they need to do is open up my test system and click on that deck. And multi deck pulls up. So this is what our multi deck application looks like. Now you got a couple of things here. One, the real time view screen, uh, which shows you the real time values, your RMS, peak to peak, values like that. And then you can drop down and choose your data views. So what you can do here is create new data views to see this data while it's being collected. If I just right click, I have the option to create new ones. We have waveform graph, waveform chart, list boxes, SFP graph, and digital facts. So let's go ahead and create a waveform graph. Now right now it's flashing red because we don't have any of the channels actually applied to it. So if I right click and do configure, it's going to let me choose which of these channels I want to do. Uh, in this case, let's say I want all three channels showing up on this graph. Choose that. And you'll see now if I shake this accelerometer a little bit, the values are updating as I would expect them to. Uh, with the more up and down in the Z direction, I'm getting more of a reaction from my Z direction channel than I have on my X and Y direction channel. So that's one of the types you can have. Uh, so I right click into a new into a waveform chart. Let's just go ahead and say we want just the Z direction perhaps for this waveform chart. Uh, and that one is obviously going to continuously collect data as opposed to showing data snapshots here. You can also create a list box. Uh, new configure. You can choose what channels you want applied to it. Let's say we want all of the channels here. And you can choose what columns to display. So maybe I want my max and min level as well. You can choose your precision, font, everything like that. Press OK. And this is pretty similar to that real-time view. It just gives you a lot more configurable of an option. Now at this point, you notice this doesn't look very good. I've got my waveform graph, chart, list box. And obviously, I can manually move everything around to make it look nicer. Or you can just push on the Tile Windows button. Uh, probably one of my favorite features within MultiDAC. Fastest and easiest way to just see all your data as it's being collected. It's a great way to verify that your data is being collected appropriately. Uh, you can see it in a chart, graph, list box, view your real-time views, and you can just tile those windows out to see them as, uh, as appropriate. Uh, I guess one more thing I'll point out for this one, uh, if I configure my waveform graph, you notice I'm just getting 0.5 second uh, blocks, and that's because our graph sample is 1,024. Remember, our sample rate was 2,048. So let's just update that to 2,048. And as expecting now, I'm getting one second snapshot of the data being collected. So this is multi DAC. Uh, this is uh, where you're going to be collecting this data at. How do you do that? You think to start logging the data. So down here, the start logging button, you just click on that. Uh, it's going to start your timer and it's going to start collecting this data. So shake this accelerometer around a little bit. Uh, you'll see my Z direction is updating in that waveform chart. Getting a little less if I shake it to the side. Let's take a couple seconds of data for this. 
And then once you finish collecting data, just click Stop Logging. And that's going to automatically ask uh, what you want to save it as, and it's going to pull it up in the project folder that you selected when you uh, made did your project tab. In this case, we're using demo Excel data. It's going to automatically save that as a TDMS file. Just click Save here. And now, because we hit Preview Data on Save, it's automatically going to pull that up in Test View Plus. So this is what Test View Plus looks like. Uh, don't really need all those tabs. I had those open from the previous test that I was doing. Uh, but it's going to automatically pull the data up here. Uh, you do see uh, you can choose whether or not to show certain channels. And there's a couple of other things you can do with this. So on the left side, if you click on the actual CDMS file you have, all that project data that you added in here, that documentation info, is all uh, saved right down here. So that whoever's viewing the CDMS file can quickly see that information. You click on your Excel demo uh, to see the kind of task info that we have created. And you can click on the individual channels to see that the uh, info that we put in for all of our channels. And then as far as plotting these, you have a few different types. So if you just create a new tab, you have the option to use time history, a color map, a table, or an XY plot, depending on what kind of data you're creating. Obviously, time history is the best one for our accelerometer data. Accelerometer data. Uh, so what you can do is either just click and drag one of your channels over, you can choose multiple and drag them over to replace it. Or if you just click on it and use the right arrow, then that will display it as well. So those are ways you can view the actual data. Uh, if you need to add any more files that you want to view in it, just click Add File. And that will let you choose another TDMS file. So now I've got this test TDMS file that I had created earlier. Display these together. Like I didn't take them at the same time, so it doesn't really make much meaningful sense. But if perhaps you had uh, two different data, two different uh, points of data that you had taken differently, but you want to graph them together, you could open them up in two different TDMS files. Or if you have multiple tasks within one uh, multi deck, then you'll be able to graph those together as well. The other thing up here is the different analysis tools that you have. If you drop down, you can see our analysis tools here. I'm going to talk a little bit more about those later in the presentation. Go ahead and do one real quick, though. Your Z direction. We can perform an FFC analysis, perhaps, on this one. Uh, you can choose your window type. Unit terms, maximum frequency, your window size. Uh, obviously, what this is, if any of you have been programming in LabVIEW are familiar with this, you're essentially using the FFP function, um, but you're not having to program any of it. You can just use this user interface to quickly choose what you want to apply this FFP analysis to. And then just press OK on that. It's going to pull up a new uh, TDMS file under this demo Excel data that we created. And then it's going to give you your magnitude and your phase. And obviously, that's plotted here. You see a little bit of magnitude. You see some peaks. Obviously, I was just shaking an accelerometer, so I'm not going to see as much as I would with perhaps a bearing analysis or something like that. Uh, so that is Test View Plus. Uh, that's where you can see that data at. We'll close that out. My multi deck is still here. Now, one other nice thing about the multi deck, I've created these data views. I've got them set out all in a format that I like. If I just X that out, the next time that I run that multi deck again, click on this test multi deck, it's going to pull it back up in exactly the format that I had earlier. So if you finish the test one day, come back to do the test the next day, uh, you don't have to keep configuring these options.
All right, and that is our demonstration of kind of a general overview of iPad system. Obviously, there's a lot more features available within it, and that's something we'll look at in later webinars. Okay. So the next thing, full versus free version. Uh, so this is what I was talking about earlier. The free version, anybody can go onto our website, itestsystem.com, and download that free version and immediately start using it to take your data collection. That comes with multiple DAC MX tasks. Um, it allows you to save all your data as a GDMS file, and like we did, it allows you to preview your data on completion. Now, perhaps you need to do a more advanced test. Perhaps you'd like some more advanced features. That we do have the full version for. Um, if you're interested in the full version, just contact us. We'll gladly help set you up with that. Um, and we do, of course, do uh, trials of the full version as well if you'd like to just make sure that it works for whatever type of test you're doing. With our full version, you get resampling and triggering, uh, which we're going to talk about those in a later webinar. Um, chassis synchronization is a really big one. So if you're going to use those 9469 modules to synchronize your chassis together, um, you'll want the full version to be able to do that. Um, we also have the Multidec XL version. That comes with a couple more features. GPS, CAN, CCP, and shared variables are all a part of that. Uh, we do have a, another webinar planned for Multidec XL later if you're interested in those particular features. Uh, the analysis. So these are the analysis tools that I showed you in the drop-down in Test View Plus. Uh, these are all the analyses that you can do on the data that you're taking with Multitac. You can do a TAC analysis, a resample, you can filter your data, do a Rosette analysis, the FFT, which I showed you earlier. You can use SEPSU Plus to do integration on your data. You can use it for a fine trigger analysis, perhaps if you're doing some type of modal test where you've collected the data yourself with uh, Multitac, you can trigger it afterwards. And then uh, fatigue analysis. Those are all analysis analyses available within I tested them. And correct me if I'm wrong, those are on the free version, correct? Um, I, I know the tag and resample and filter are on the free version. Okay. Probably possibly FFT as well. But uh, fatigue and rosette are probably paid. Okay. If, uh, if there are certain analyses, of course, that you need that aren't available within the free version and you're interested in trial trialing with iTest system, just let us know. We'll be happy to let you try it out to make sure those analyses work for you. Uh, some other applications, Impact Suite, we are going to do a uh, demonstration over this one later, but I thought I'd just pull it up to show you real quick. Basically, the Impact Suite is for acquiring FRS data from a roving hammer impact test. It's going to essentially let you uh, trigger by hitting it with the hammer, with a modal hammer, in order to get your uh, vibration data from that. It lets you collect data from multiple accelerometers at once. Uh, you'll see this picture down here. Uh, the bike, we actually had a bike in our office that we put accelerometer, accelerometers all along, um, hit it with the modal test, and we use this impact suite in order to generate uh, that image of the bike. And you'll be able to visualize the different structural mode shapes of that bike um, through the use of this suite. Now, this does save both time and frequency domain data with it. So again, we're going to do another uh, more in-depth view of this impact suite in another webinar, but that is something available with it. And then some future updates. So you may remember when I clicked on that configuration screen, a couple things popped up. I pointed out um, automated analytics is something we're working on that should be coming up here shortly. Um, this allows you to process and manage data immediately after your data is collected. And then your notifications. Uh, which is for emailing or FTPing data and reports automatically. And that integrates uh, seamlessly with your A2 automated analytics. That's a good way to take your data, have it automatically generate a report uh, with your automated analytics, and then send out a notification with those notification services to whoever you need to be seeing that report. Of course, if you have any questions, you can feel free to email myself or Mark. I'm going to uh, keep up the last slide for a minute or so with our email addresses. Um, our next webinar is planned for April 25th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, we're going to be talking about multi-DAC synchronization tips and tricks is the next plan. 
So that is our next planned webinar. And here's our email addresses. I'm, again, Matt Thatcher, Integrated Test and Measurement, uh, Mark Yeager as well. If you have any questions for either of us, feel free to email us at these addresses and we'll be happy to help you out. Uh, so I would like to thank everyone for joining us in this webinar and we look forward to seeing you all next month.